بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The one who is a victim of our envy does not suffer so much because of our envy. And that's why Imam al-Hassan al-Basri rahmatullahi has said something which is very beautiful. He said, مَا رَأَيْتُ ظَالِمًا أَشْبَهَ بِظَالِمْ مِنْ حَاسِدْ نَفَسٌ دَائِمْ وَحُزْنٌ لَازِمْ وَعَبْرَةٌ لَا تَنْفَدْ Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, a very wise and famous scholar, he says that I have never seen someone who's oppressed Sorry, I have never seen an oppressor who seems more like an oppressed one. I have never seen an oppressor and a perpetrator of a crime who actually seems more like the oppressed and a victim himself. So, than a hasid, an envier. When you look at an envious person, in reality, he is perpetrating the sin and crime of envy against someone else. He is the one who is oppressing another and being unjust to another with his crime and sin of envy. But in reality, he looks more like the oppressed and the victim himself. Because Nafasun Da'im says, endless sighs, Huznun Nazim, inseparable grief, Wa'abratun La Tanfad, and endless tears. And that's him, not the victim of his envy. So it's fire which consumes a person from within. It doesn't make sense. It's, it requires so much energy. It's far better for a person to be happy for someone else. That relieves an individual. And this is why another famous scholar says, well, a poet says, لِلَّهِ دَرُّ الْحَسَدِ مَا أَعْدَلَ بَدَأَ بِصَاحِبِهِ فَقَتَلَ To Allah belongs the wonder of envy. Envy begins with the envy and it kills him. Envy begins with the envier and it kills him. And there's another beautiful poem which says that وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ نَشْرَ فَضِيلَةٍ طُوِيَتْ أَتَاحَ لَهَا عَيْنَ حَسُودِي لَوْ لَشْتِعَالُ النَّارِ فِي مَا جَاوَرَتْ مَا كَانَ يُعْرَفُ طِيبُ عَرْفِ الْعُودِ It rhymes. It says that when Allah wishes to expose and reveal, or when Allah wishes to reveal a virtue which was hitherto concealed, then Allah gives to that virtue the tongue of an envious person. So that person constantly talks about the victim of his envy and the virtues and the good deeds of that victim of envy appear and are revealed to the people. And then there's a very beautiful couplet that follows it, which says, If it wasn't for the bursting of fire and the inflammation of fire, and it's lighting up what's in its immediate surroundings, the fragrance of Ud would never be known. The beauty of the fragrance of Ud would never be known. Meaning, you know Ud. Ud in Arabic simply means stick. And when we have this rood, uh, sticks that are burnt, th these sticks are actually from the bark of trees, fragrant trees. So it's just normal bark. And if you smell the dry bark, it's odorless. It's actually odorless. Or it may have a slight fragrant odor, but not much. In fact, some of them, the original genuine ones, are odorless. But when you, when you light a fire and heat them up, there are oils uh, as residue within the bark of those trees. And this oil burns and gives off, gives off a very powerful uh, and very beautiful pra fragrance. So he's, again, speaking of fire, he says, if it wasn't for fire, uh, which lights up its surroundings uh, and burns the wood and the bark of these trees, or oud, then the beauty of the fragrance would have, of oud would never be realized. And again, he speaks about uh, the individual, that when the fire of envy rages within an envious person, it burns and consumes him, but he actually gives off the fragrance of other people's virtues and the virtues of the victim of his envy.